Okay, this part is more or less about quilting, um, but again, I'll probably be jumping all over the place. And I'm gonna start out with finishes. Um, last, year before last, um, not last November, but the November before was the first cross-stitch retreat uh, that was held in the Amana colonies in Iowa. It was the Midwest uh, fall retreat. And one of the, we made a couple day trips or um, trips out of town to one of the neighboring towns to a quilt shop called the Woolen Needle. And um, they are known for their wool. I've bought patterns from them for, for a long, long time uh, when I would go to like quilt market or go to um, the, the Sew Expo that's held every year at the Puyallup Fairgrounds, the State Fairgrounds in Washington. Um, but while there, I, uh, I, I dropped a chunk of change and I bought several kits. And um, we, we went there a couple weeks ago too when we were there in Amana for the spring cross stitch uh, retreat. And it reminded me of um, some of the stuff I had bought before. So uh, in my haul, I'm gonna show you some of the new kits that I bought, but this one is one that I bought uh, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago. And it's called Metal Art Path. Uh, I'm gonna show you the quilt, the finished quilt, and then I'll probably insert a little video that kind of shows the quick journey. I did publish it on my Instagram, um, but this might give you a, a little bit better idea. But here's the quilt. It's a wall hanging size. It's about 27 by 27. I haven't finished it yet, so it's just the quilt top. This is wool applique. So the center is wool. I think there's about five different kinds of, um, of kind of ivory colored wool and it's blanket stitched on and then the border for the medallion and then the border is pieced. Um, it took me, I'd say four days to put this together. It went really quickly. I actually could have got it done in uh, maybe two days if I can, if I hadn't, dinked around and, and worked on other things and, you know, naps and stuff like that. But I did this last uh, week when Lisa was here. Lisa came down and visited for a week. She came down and set up her office and, and worked uh, during the week. And then on the weekend, we went and hit the antique stores, etc. of which I will show you my biggest haul uh, a little bit later. But um, this is called Metal, Metal Lark Path uh, by the Woolen Needle and I bought it as a kit. Their kits, I think, are extremely reasonable priced. Um, this one may have been, I think the pattern was nine, nine or $10, uh, maybe nine to $12, I don't remember, it's in that range. And then the kit, I have to say the kit was in the $35 range, I don't remember exactly. But um, very reasonable, um, you trace it out, you cut it out, um, you fuse it on, you stitch it on. This stitching is very relaxing, uh, more relaxing than stitching cross stitch, even though I find cross stitch very relaxing. But this is very meditative. Um, you can watch a movie and actually pay attention to it while you're stitching. Um, the blanket stitch is super easy. There's a lot of videos online about how to do a blanket stitch. Um, Lisa Bonjean is probably my favorite. Um, if you want me to do a little tutorial, I'm happy to do that too, but uh, go out and check out Lisa Bonjean of uh, Primitive Gatherings. She's, she's awesome. Um, I did the back using Joe Morton. This is something, again, if you're interested, I can talk about a little bit. Uh, I, years ago, I belonged to Joe Morton Little Quilts Club. Um, she does a lot of reproduction, primitive looking things. Um, and she had a lot of tips and tricks about piecing with small piecing. There's millions of them out there. I like this one in particular because I'm also a long arm quilter. Um, one of the banes of long arm quilting is seams, particularly seams where you have several pieces that are being joined together. This is only four, but if you're working on, um, no, anything with a star, sometimes you have up to eight seams that are together. And Joe Morton talks about how to make those seams lie extremely flat because as your hopping foot is coming along and you've got your quilt here and your hopping foot's right here, 
it can't encounter, I'll just, let's say my knuckle is, is a bumpy seam. It can encounter that, it can get caught. Um, my machine is computerized and um, if I wasn't right there paying attention and it got caught, it could actually rip the quilt, it, it could tear the quilt um, because there's no stopping that machine, it's an industrial machine. Um, or you get these really wonky jump stitches over that or kind of does a little hump thing. So if you have a very smooth surface and that doesn't have a lot of bulk, um, the quilting, your, your quilts are, if you send your quilts out, it's gonna be so happy with you that they don't have to deal with these, these bulky seams um, where they have to figure out how to get up to the seam or get over that seam without making a mess. So. Um, if you're interested in that, I can talk about that more in another video, um, but that's what that is. And then I'm going to insert a little small clip here that kind of shows the, the, the progression of putting this little quilt top together. Hopefully by next video or actually maybe in a month or so, maybe in a couple of videos, I'll have this quilted. Um, I haven't decided whether I'm going to hand, hand quilt this or whether I'm going to machine quilt this. Uh, but I do want to get it up on a wall. So I'm going to insert that right here. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is some quilts that I um, am just starting or am planning to start soon. Um, um, some of them I'm collecting fabrics for, but I'm just going to share a little bit about them. Uh, like several people, I've fallen a little bit down the Lori Holt uh, rabbit hole. Um, Lori Holt does beautiful work. She's um, she's very generous with her patterns. There's lots of, of quilt alongs. I don't necessarily, um, her colors and stuff like that, while extremely adorable, are not my style. I'm definitely more of the reproduction prim. But I have, um, I have several retreat bedrooms here. I, I do small retreats, uh, obviously not right now, but um, I usually I can I can have between eight and ten people here. Um, there are retreats that I host. I, I don't rent out my house, um, but I have three bedrooms here that I get to dress any way I want. And I have one that um, we've decided to call the cottage room. But basically, right now it is decorated in twenties uh, and thirties. And I'm going to show a little picture of what that looks like right here. And um, I've been looking at different different things to put in there. So Lori Holt's style is going to fit in there just beautifully. I think it's darling. Um, I also, I have a granddaughter who is 10. And there's a particular Lori Holt quilt that I want to make for her. I'm going to show you right now. And I'm a little tardy to the party on this one. It came out, I'm not sure what year. It's probably three or more years ago. Um, Celeste Creates has talked about it too. I think she showed some pieces of it in her Quilty Tube number one. But um, it's called the Less Bakes Sew Along. You can still find this on the Riley Blake website. You can download it. It has all of the pattern, all of your, um, your instructions. The videos are there. It has the sew, this is the Sew Along Guide. And then um, basically what you do is you purchase the So Simple Shapes, which I have here. And uh, back to my granddaughter, where they, why this makes, why this is important. She loves to bake and she has, oh gosh, since she was two, anytime you're baking, she, she was right in there 
and my daughter has really encouraged that. Uh, for her ninth birthday, my mother and I went in together and we bought her a KitchenAid. Now, I think that may sound kind of extravagant to many of you. Um, it was it was not the one you, you pick up at Costco. We actually got a particular color one, one that she wanted. Um, but she bakes and she really, really bakes. Um, a lot of things. In fact, last year she she rose to the level of making macaroons. That kind of tells you um, how into it she is. But I want to make this quilt for her. Um, I think this is perfect colors for her. I am going to change out the KitchenAid from red, even though I really like the red. I'm going to make it the, I think it's a Nordic blue or something like that is the color that uh, we bought for her. So I'm working on collecting the fabrics for this. It's kind of hard because most of them are, uh, they're gone, right? This this is from, like I said, three or more years ago, maybe, maybe longer than that. Um, I did find uh, one of Lori's backgrounds, which is the ball jars. <laughs> this is really cute. So I'm gonna use this for the background if I cannot locate the background that it calls for. Um, in this particular quilt. The background for this is really cute. I've seen pictures of it. It's basically um, another uh, white background. Oops, sorry for the, the glare. Um, but it has the shape outlines of like the KitchenAid and a lot of utensils and red and it's it's adorable. But I do have a, a, a fat eighth bundle so that will get me started. And um, so I'm, I'm pulling things and I'm pulling this together to to make this. I may try to pull from her new line. She she had a video that came out last week, I think it was. Uh, she has another bake line. I, I don't exactly recall what it's called, but it's it's baking themed as well. Um, I may be able to pull some fabrics from, from that line as well. So this is, um, this is in the works for my granddaughter and I'm hoping that I can get that put together soon. Uh, the other other part of the Lori Holt rabbit hole, here, let me move some things here, that I fell down. And this was, um, I have to balance some things here in my lap. This was something that, this was my first purchase when I got my my three-month checkup scan, and which came back good. Um, and I needed to reward myself. I hadn't spent any money in months and I hadn't been stitching and I had seen this and I thought it was super adorable. And this is where it ties into my retreat room. Sorry, I've told you all over the place. But this is called the Flea Market uh, Flowers Sew Along. Again, this is something you can download from the Riley Blake site. This is what the quilt looks like. And I had just went ahead and I ordered the entire quilt. Um, and then I ordered uh, the seed rulers and I ordered the circle rulers. Um, circles can be challenging and they're not always easy to get perfect. I had some circle cutters but I didn't have any of these and this is this is going to be very handy for just about any quilting so I was really happy to get um, these circle rulers and then I bought uh, excuse me here let me move these off my lap Then I bought the entire quilt set, and these colors are just adorbs. They are so cute, and they're going to look really, this is gonna look really darling in that retreat room. Um, so that quilt is being made for that room because you know we have to be able to dress it and change out and that sort of thing. So that one I've just now started cutting out. Um, I haven't got very far because I keep getting squirreled but uh, I am working on it. And this is the backing. I love this backing. That is just gorgeous. I wish I could find sheets. So Lori, if you're watching this, you need to go into the home decor. I mean, not just your, your you know, decor fabric way. I need sheets, I need sheets. Every one of your 101 uh, background fabrics could be beautiful sheets and I'm not into making them. So consider that, consider making sheets. So there's that one. Um, the other one that I am, it's a block of the month that I have started getting um, fabric for. Oh, real quick. Got the thread to go with that. 
this is more in line with the, the color scheme and style that um, that I have in the majority of my house. And this is a Kim Deal block of the month, and it's called Humble and Heartfelt. And there's the quilt. That's not that's not really a really good representation of that quilt, but that gives you the basic um, basic gist of what it is. And I'm just going to show a few of the fabrics that belong to this quilt. And I've bought the backing for this one too. It just it just makes it so much easier. I don't have to hunt down things. Um, this is the backing of this particular quilt. So I haven't actually started cutting out and working on this yet. I think I get my last installment of the block of the month next month. So, but that that is definitely on my radar um, to be working on soon. Uh, the last one that I'm going to show you that I have been working on, but not as diligently as I should. Um, I showed this way back in the big, so one of my early videos. It's a quote for my daughter that we started when she was in high school. And I'll show you a couple blocks. It's a red and white quilt. And here's one of the white blocks, or actually one of the red blocks. It's done in 20s and 30s fabric. This is a corner block. And this is one of the white blocks. And I have all of the half square triangles sewn where I'm at right now is squaring them up. Um, I think Celeste talked about this a little bit in her recent video where she was working on a quilt and she ended up putting it in timeout um, because she hadn't necessarily square up the blocks. I, I learned that lesson years and years ago. If you want to save yourself hours of headache and uh, reverse stitching and all of that, square up your blocks. It's really important. Um, along with pressing, I remember I was a clothing, I did clothing construction early on from a, a very young age. And one part about clothing construction that always frustrated me and I would skip a lot, a step that I would skip a lot is pressing between each seam and in just just pressing in general. And there are always things that frustrated me and 90% of it was solved by pressing as you go. And so just like screwing up your blocks, uh, you need to press as you go for quilting. I, I know like if you watch Lori Holt or many others that they're showing you they're pressing as they're going. It is extremely important. However, whichever method you use, um, you, you need to do that because even just an eighth of an inch off on your quilting is going to make a difference between frustration and and fabulous. So, so just do that. So, I have a bazillion and one half square triangles that I need to to make sure that they're square. Um, I do that in batches. Um, like Celeste said, most of mine are, are right on the market. You never know. And that one or two or 10, let's just say, let's say 10%, which I would say is probably pretty, let's just say 3%. If 3% of 880 different half square triangles are off, you're, you're, you're going to have a mess. So I second her public service announcement, press and square up. So I'm in the squaring up stage, and then once I get that squared up, then I get the second half of the box. Oh, and I should show you what it looks like. Um, let's see, is it in here? Hmm. There we go. So, SFNK. Single female, single female No Kids is the name of this, and this is a Carrie Nelson pattern. And as I mentioned before, um, this one will look quite different than this particular quilt because um, this was a just a plain red and, well, not plain. <laughs> There's nothing plain about this. This was a uh, two color solid uh, red and white, and then I'm using the, I, I think there's about 12 different um, 20s fabrics in, in here. So that's what I've been working on. 
and I hope to get that done soon. As I said, we started it when she was in high school and she just turned 33, so I need to get on that, don't I? Okay, so let's see. I have some haul and stitchy gifts I wanna show you. I'm looking around here. Oh, um, jumping back to cross stitch. I do have a fully finished piece and um, let me go get it. Okay, so I neither stitched this piece nor finished it. Um, my friend Audrey, Stitchy Witch 42, um, stitched this piece. It's a mooka. Um, if you follow Stitchy Witch 42, and if you don't, why? You need to go follow her. Um, anyway, if you go follow her, you'll see that she has done several Alphonse mooka full coverage pieces um, over the years. They're beautiful, they're stunning. And um, summer before last, uh, Audrey and several uh, other stitchy friends came and hung out with me for the weekend and she brought this piece to uh, To show me I had asked her to bring it because I, I had missed the stitchy meetup at acorns and threads where she showed it And I was teasing her uh, saying how great it would look in my house and um, She contacted me a little bit after that weekend and said she had thought about it and sh she agreed that it belonged in my house um, and I was floored. I was flabbergasted. I mean, talk about, talk about stitchy kindness and, and friends and, and all of that. It, it, she's amazing. Uh, this piece is amazing. And without further ado, I'm going to show it to you. So I showed it before, uh, unframed, but right before I was diagnosed, I had, uh, dropped this off at the framers and then Audrey picked it up for me because it was at a framers close by where she lives and she's been holding it. And so when I left to go um, to Lisa's um, before we went on the trip to Amana, um, I picked this up from Audrey. And uh, here it is. So this is Alphonse Mucha, and I'm gonna have to show it to you in pieces. Uh, this is called the Moon Goddess, and she is just stunning. She's been framed. The amazing part about this stitch piece is how it glows. Um, I love looking at it in different light and this is not the greatest light. <clears throat> well, you can kind of see here, but look, look how it, you, you see the haze and the glow. You've got the, the glow here of the fairy lights, etc., And it is just beautiful and I could not be more thrilled. This holds an honored place in my home and always will. I asked Audrey to write out um, some information about her stitching journey on this and the kind of the circumstances of how it came to live with me and, and she did and so that's going to be attached to the back of this piece um, so it can remain with it. So uh, Alphonse Mucha, uh, the Moon Goddess and stitched by Stitchy Witch 42 and framed at the local craft warehouse in Salem. Oregon. Okay, so that's my fully finished piece. One of the few <laughs> that I have. I, I'm, I really need to get onto the stitching. And next I'm going to talk about haul. Let's see where to begin. Um, I'm just going to scooch over here and grab, grab some. <clears throat> okay. I've got my, my tiered tray here. I finally succumbed and, and bought one, um, mostly because I needed a place to kind of throw stuff while, while uh, I have a place to put things for, for videos. So uh, this is sort of a haul. This is actually Stitchy Kindness. This was gifted to me at the um, Amanda Quil or Stitch Retreat a couple of weeks ago by Susan. Am I getting this right? I apologize. This is a really good friend of Lisa. She made Lisa one as well. And, oh, I feel terrible. I will put who gifted this to me down here, up here, some, somewhere around here. But it's super cute. It's a little tomato and then it's um, a um, pin keep or a needle keep. So that was gifted to me. When I was visiting Audrey, you know, Audrey has been on a strawberry kick and I was lucky enough she gifted me 
Um, this one is adorable. It's got a beautiful silk ribbon and it's just like a velour and it has strawberries on it. So I got a strawberry. Um, <clears throat> so those are some stitchy kindness. Oh, I'll, I'll keep on with the stitchy kindness. So one of, um, one of my really good friends, one of my bacon sisters, um, and you'd have to go back some videos. Um, the, the retreat that we had here at my house, the, the stitchy gal, gal weekend was a bacon weekend. It was bacon themed. So she's one of my bacon sisters all during my, my, illness, my treatment and convalescence and, and all of that. She, she sent me things, um, some real, some really wonderful things and, and I'll share more of them later. Um, I have a few of them here. These are ones that she said that she had boxed up, but, um, had not gotten, uh, in the mail to me. So she brought them to the retreat. I got to see at the retreat. You guys are going to flip when you see this. So here's one of them. This is a uh, Victorian, this is, this is all vintage, uh, velvet and lace and buttons and sequins and vintage applique and I've got pens, look at the top, look at the bottom. So <laughs> this is gorgeous. This is called um, Crazy Quilting. So this probably came from a Crazy Quilt. So if you look here, there's uh, embroidery, there's silk ribbon. Um, oh my gosh, these little little vintage buttons. Every time I look at it, I find something new on here that I didn't notice before. There is an embroidered pansy. Um, there's some other pearl buttons. This is flipping amazing. Um, so this was in a box that she brought me and, um, no words, no words, but that's not all. In the same box, was this. This is um, Burnout Velvet, so that's Burnout, and I would say it's also hand-painted. So there's the back of it. This is Velvet, the trim it has these itty-bitty little crocheted and beaded acorns and then these beautiful buttons and then different pins. I'm telling you folks, this girl knows how to pick them. She really does. So she's my good friend. Um, I think she's on Instagram as Mimi Thiessen and um, I love her to death. She She's just, she's just such a wonderful, thoughtful lady and has extremely, extremely good taste. So those were in a box. She also gifted me um, what I call a fuzzy blanket. It's, it's one of the silky, like Mickey type blankets. And um, it reminds me, it, it thrills me to my hippie chick soul. <clears throat> it reminds me of... Uh, a background of Alphonse Mucha. It's really pretty. I, I might show it in a future video, but it's, it's kind of too big to haul out right here. So those were some gifts from Mimi, uh, Marcy. And we're going to go right back into haul here. Um, this is a piece of wool that I, I bought. I'm going to talk about those wool stores, but it's here on my tray, so I'll talk about that right now. Um, when we were in Amana, we took another day trip to a quilt shop called The Little Red Hen. Um, if you want to see a little bit of footage of that, then again, go back to Lisa Kendra Stitcher's video and you can see. But while I was there, I got a Kim Deal uh, little hanging quilt kit. And you can sort of see on the front, that's what it, it looks like. And that's probably going to be in the works. It's called Chicken Scratch Patch. Um, the great thing about the Little Red Hen is they had a lot of, uh, not only their, their store patterns, um, of which, um, they have several books out and are, are fairly well known, but, um, many well-known designers where <clears throat> if you have the book already or you have the, or you can buy the pattern or the book there, but they have many things quilted up or kitted up and, um, it just, it makes it so much easier than, than buying it yourself. This 
quilt is like 14 and a half by 16 and a half. This has all of the fabric that you'll need for a very reasonable price. I think this was $23 for this entire little quilt kit. So that's part of haul. Um, <clears throat> jumping back to the wool and needle, um, I have a lot to show you from there, but here's some little woolen quilt kits from there. This is a little um, coaster, a little pumpkin coaster, and it is the entire kit, everything you need except for the Valdani thread. And here's another one, a uh, little spool. These were adorable. They, they were just adorable. Again, the quilt's uh, very reasonable. I think it was $13 for the entire quilt. Um, this was some stitchy kindness that I got at the quilt retreat. Uh, I don't remember who passed these out. I should, but I, I don't. So it's a very nice hunk of beeswax with a bee. Um, while I was... Um, visiting Lisa, I visited one of my favorite local shops there in, in Olympia, my former hometown, which is Shipwreck Beads. It's the largest bead store in the world. Um, I went looking for strawberry tops because Audrey's Strawberry Mania is um, rubbing off on me, but I needed some findings. So I bought a lot of little, little things to do to make strawberry tops with. Here, this is a better view. And then while I'm there, they have a really great selection of um, bone things. So I got a bunch of bone rings to put in um, sewing rolls, etc. Okay, what else? Oh, I have one more thing on this tray. Put it down. <clears throat> Jumping back to Amana. Uh, there's a lot of um, antique shops in Amanda, and we visited a few. Um, I did not shop as much as I normally do because I only had so much suitcase room. But one of the things I picked up, um, these are salt sellers, uh, vintage salt sellers. And uh, I, I picked up this one to use for an ort container. It's very heavy. It's like um, paperweight heavy but it's, it's nice so it's not gonna fall off and then at the same store they had a bunch of vintage buttons and so these are um, bone buttons and these are just a set of vintage buttons that I thought were cute uh, this is something else my friend Mimi Thiessen Marcy Thiessen uh, brought to me she brought one for uh, several of us and it's similar to like the book of days it's called an, a notebook to track um, sampler stitching and so it has pages in there to fill out and this is the front cover and it's lovely it's by Art Designs so that was a stitchy kindness and let's see I think I'm gonna stick with the wool we're gonna talk about the wool and then we're gonna talk more about quilting so hold on while I go grab my haul one of the kits that I wanted the last time I was there and um, I, I didn't pick up um, and I made sure it was the first thing that I grabbed when I went in this time was this table runner. This is by the Woolen Needle. This is their, their pattern. It's about 16 by 25 and a half inches and it is just beautiful. Um, I think Michelle Farm Girl showed it on one of her recent videos and it reminded me that I wanted it. So I picked up this pattern and I picked up the kit for the pattern. So all of the fabric and all of the wool is in there. Again, super reasonable. I think the kit here was $36 and the pattern is nine. And it's probably one I will be doing sometime this summer, maybe when I want to do Christmas in July. <clears throat> I also picked up, oh, here we go. They had the cutest, um, this is the cutest idea. These are wool frames, meaning they're, they're, they're picture frames, but the frame is made out of wool. And I'm going to try to show you this up close so you can kind of see. So the one, sorry about the glare. The one that I got is this one down here that my finger is kind of pointing to. This one down here. So I picked up this pattern and there's three in there. 
So there's the sunflower one, which is really cute. And then there's another one with um, um, buttons on it. Um, this is called Frame It for Fall. They had Frame It for Spring and Winter as well, I believe. And I got the uh, quilt kit for the Frame It for Fall. Again, super reasonable. The entire quilt was like $25 and this this um, pattern was 14, but you, you got three patterns in there. Um, and a lot of my wool just fell off in the floor. Darn it. <clears throat> um, I got one more kit and I'm gonna grab the book so I can this show you. This is one of my favorite books. I know a lot of people have been introducing wool in, into their videos, which is fabulous because it's a great, um, it's, it's like what fills in the the gap between uh, quilting and cross stitching because you're getting a little bit of both you're getting some stitching in there you're getting that that fabric refill um it's really easy to work with it's it's a great um gateway <laughs> gateway to quilting <clears throat> but this book is will applique heirlooms and it's um i love everything fall those are my colors that's my my um season that I love. Look at this one. That's on my list, but not right now. Um, the one that I want to do is, do, 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 do. we're almost there. Hold on. This one right here. So it's called Let the Leaves Fall. And I also picked up the, the quilted bundle. So it includes all of the wool and many of the pieces are backed um, underneath with um, a calico fabric. So that is included in those as well. Again, uh, let's see, this one was 30, $35 um, and the pattern was in here. Um, of course, while we're there, we had to do some wool shopping, which I did. And I have several pieces here, um, just luscious, luscious wool. So, and, and then uh, Lisa and Michelle and I went to a shop called Wool Socks and Holly. It was such a wonderful shop. She, it was kind of by appointment. We we called ahead and then showed up and. It was a beautiful, beautiful wool store. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, and I bought. <coughs> Excuse me. I bought several pieces of wool. Again, super reasonably priced. That was the most reasonably be reasonably priced wool I have ever ever seen, and it's high quality really great stuff here oops here are some other pieces that i i got um <clears throat> one of them that i really really liked <coughs> excuse me was this green and the reason i liked it is because it's one color of green on one side and one color of green on the other so it's going to do double duty for colors Okay, hold on for a minute. I need to go get a drink of water and then I will be right back. Okay, that's better. So, um, back to haul. I have absolutely no idea how long this video is gonna be with all of the, the pieces pieced together. Um, probably long, but why stop now? Um, one of the first times that I ventured out after um, after treatment, um, Lisa was pushing me, trying to get me out of the house, and so we went to the local quilt shop here in Sisters, which is called The Stitching Post. And while we were there, the first thing we both saw, and then uh, we went home, um, thought about it, and went back the next day, and we bought, and that is the Jane Austen quilt kit. So, um, I think Olivia B, not Olivia B, I'm sorry, <clears throat> Olivia uh, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts and uh, several other people, we all bought it about the same time. So I've had this for quite a while. 
Olivia has actually started cutting hers out. I'm not sure if she started piecing it yet. It's going to be quite a while before I actually um, cut mine out. But here is the what the quilt cut looks like. This is what the quilt looks like. Again, this is something um, I'm not going to tackle until I'm, I'm a lot closer to 100%, which is, is not going to be for a while. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so I got this. So this is a haul. This is a, a future quilt. Um, more recently, when I was online looking for something else, I actually stumbled across... Um, I'd call it an out of print quilt. It's not really out of print. It was a quilt kit that came out some years ago, um, maybe three, four, five years ago. And I, I wanted it when it came out and I didn't buy it. And then I kicked myself repeatedly afterwards. And I was looking for, um, I don't remember what I was looking for, but I found a quilt shop that actually had this in stock. Not only was it in stock, but it was on sale. And um, this is a, a quilt called Lancaster by Joe Morton. Uh, it's named after the quilt line that is it's made with. But this is a quilt kit that I, I found. I was super duper excited that I found it. And I'm really looking forward to making this. This is my aesthetic. Um, uh, matches my house and my colors and, and the reproduction fabrics that I, I dearly love. So really excited to get started on this um after you know the three other quilts that i already talked about um get done <clears throat> but this is something i acquired it's part of my stash part of my haul um and i also let's see i'm going to jump back into stitchy kindness so right before right before i got sick um on my last video i had talked about a particular blackbird quilt book that came out in the 90s and I actually had two people contact me to tell me that they had the book and that they were would be happy to send it to me and one person Ronnie um, Ronnie contacted me and she sent it to me and um, talk about stitchy kindness that was so fabulous I did get um, a nice little gift that I sent back to her and I think we were both thrilled with the exchange. But she sent me um, the Blackbird Design quilt that I was looking for. And it was called Warm Hearts. And this is a quilt. And it was funny, uh, Lisa, on a couple of videos ago, I, I'm not sure she knew that I had got this. But she had also got the same same quilt book. So it was really cool. But the, the quilt that, there's two quilts in here that I plan on making. And I've, I've started collecting the fabrics for it. Um, uh, let me look at here. Here's, here's one of the quilts, and I will be doing something very similar to that. Uh, and that quilt is called Warm Heart, uh, the name of the book. And then the second one out of here, uh, the one that I, I really wanted the book for, was this one. It's a lot of applique, but um, I think it will be. <laughs> it's so pretty. I'm not sure about the bunnies. Um, I, I, I might put something else there in place of the bunnies, but we'll see. We'll see. But this again, uh, it's from Barb and Alma, uh, Blackbird Designs. And, oh, it came out in 2001. So it wasn't the 90s. It was 2001. So she sent this to me. Um, a, a little while ago, <clears throat> I, had, I was still looking for uh, some Blackbird Designs. There's another series that they came out with, and there's four books. Uh, Lisa has three of them. I'd, I'd like all four. Lisa would like all four, too. She'd like the fourth one. But it's a Christmas quilt. I think Carol Saltbox sticker, st stitcher, sorry, words. Um, she showed it uh, on one of her quilt um, whip or quilt, finished quilt uh, parades that she showed. And it's also one that I had, had looked for for a long time. And I don't remember the name of, of the series. But I had contacted Ronnie because she said she had several other books. And uh, I'm, I was welcome to them if, if I was interested. And so I contacted her um, <clears throat> to see if she had that particular series. And she didn't, but she did send me a picture of several books that she had. And she said, hey, I'm trying to downsize. If you want these, you're welcome to them. I, I had... Uh, I only had one of them that that she had showed. And so uh, a week or so ago in the mail, 
here's what I got. Again, talk about stitchy kindness. It is, <clears throat> it's just wonderful. Uh, this one is called the Tulip Farm. There's a series, uh, so there's four in that series. And this is Lavinia's Pressed Flowers. This one called Sweet Summer. Look at that. Is that not stunning? This has some cross stitch in it. This has some, uh, oh, look at this, this needle pocket. Isn't that beautiful? That Barbanama, they are, they are just amazing. So let's see, punch needle. Um, this one I think is my favorite of all the ones that she sent to me. This is called Higdon Camp 1924. And look at this. Is that not a beautiful patriotic? And this marries, uh, this has a little bit of everything. It's a, a basic pattern. It has the patriotic colors. It has some floral in it. It has some homespun. That's just amazing. And then the other one in here. Oh, <clears throat> here's some um, penny rug. Look at that. Isn't that cute? But the one that blew me away, and I'm pretty sure there is a cross stitch companion piece to this. But oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. Look at that quilt. I love that. So this one was published in 2002. <clears throat> so thank you again, Ronnie. Uh, you will be getting another little stitchy gift in the mail. I, it's in the works. I'm still making it, but um, be looking for that in your mailbox. Okay. Um, oh, speaking of Barb and Alma and quilts, hold on. I need to grab something. <laughs> 